Ankle fracture update. This is from the OTA Resident Core Curriculum Lecture Series Version 5. Slides by Dr. Christopher Lee. I'm Saqib Rahman narrating for you. So the objectives are uh, following this uh, lecture, and this is going to be broken up into four videos, uh, this slide deck. But uh, following everything, you should be able to understand normal versus abnormal radiographic parameters uh, for ankle fractures, indications for surgical fixation of ankle fractures, to find the articular pathology with log Hansen classification, uh, to find common posterior malleolus pathology, indications for posterior malleolus fixation, and understand the syndesmosis evaluation and treatment principles. So in this um, first part in, uh, in this video, we're going to talk about clinical and radiographic evaluation. And then in the next video, we'll pick up with uh, classification. So uh, on history, you want to understand the mechanism, what happened, the timing of the injury, um, maybe if there was soft tissue injury noted. Uh, uh, you want to assess maybe if the patient's osteoporotic or not based on their history, comorbidities, associated injury. On physical exam, you want to examine uh, general inspection, the skin, neurovascular exam, uh, illicit tenderness, um, and um, uh, assess for deformity. And also, you may need to consider uh, instability. Does the ankle easily redislocate, for example? So look at the soft tissues, right? So you may have... Uh, uh, an open injury, uh, you could have a closed injury, you could have tenting, uh, where you have something that's about to be open, or it's going to cause uh, soft tissue uh, necrosis based on um, pressure from a bony fragment uh, on, on the skin and can lead to uh, very rapid uh, devascularization and then essentially an open injury later. So here you can see um, classic uh, tenting. Uh, you can see, if you look closely, you will see um, blanching of the skin, um, indicating uh, hypovascularity and um, potential for development of skin necrosis here. Make sure you have adequate films. Uh, once you di uh, diagnose an ankle injury, you want to assess uh, the joint above, meaning the knee and the joint below. Um, standard ankle series uh, should also be included. Uh, and then you may need to consider stress radiographs. And we'll talk about this a little bit more in the next video. Um, CT scans can be helpful to look for specific pathology, like posterior malleolus fractures, for example. So on your AP x-ray, normal tib-fib overlap in the blue is about 10 millimeters. Normal tib-fib clear space is less than 5 millimeters. And... Um, you have an end-on view of the fibula, so you can evaluate um, if a screw through the fibula, let's say when you're fixing this intraoperatively, uh, you can evaluate if a screw through the fibular plate is going into the infusora or not. So that's an intraoperative uh, thing you're going to look at on your AP views. So on your mortise view, tib-fib overlap in the blue should be um, greater than one millimeter, tail-accrural angle. Uh, should be between 8 and 15 degrees. And uh, other things to look at on your mortise view. Now, keep in mind, the mortise view is when you have 10 to 15 degrees of internal rotation um, of the extremity. Uh, the medial articular surface is uh, in tangent with the beam. Uh, to the beam with posterior medial and posterior lateral borders of the tail is visualized. As you can see here, so um, that's what you, you, you should look for on a good mortise view and you can see the incisural lines up with the lateral border of the talus right so you're looking at sort of this and that there lining up right lateral ankle views um, if you have a perfect lateral of the ankle the tailor body uh, should be perfectly overlapped um, so that you don't have any double densities or anything of the um, of the articular surface of the talus. Um, note where the posterior aspect of the fibula interacts with the plafond. So sometimes, you know, if your fibula is, you know, projecting here, you may not have a good lateral or if the fibula is projecting here. So um, if you're not sure, a normal view would be your contralateral ankle. And that may help you understand 
uh, a lot of times, especially when you're doing syndesmotic reductions, like where should that fibula be positioned anterior to posterior um, in the incensura? So here's a good lateral x-ray on the left, okay? Um, and on the right, you have an x-ray that's not a perfect lateral. So a couple things. Note how the Taylor body, you have that double density shadow, makes the tibio-Taylor joint visualization less clear. Also here, you can note the relative position of the fibula with the plafond on your, on your um, good lateral, as opposed to here, you can see that fibula is much more anterior, so a little bit of rotation on that lateral. Stress views. So sometimes you have to um, do a ligamentous stress view, um, and uh, this could be done by gravity. Uh, it could be a manual, ex like an external rotation stress view. Um, you may want to consider getting a weight-bearing mortise view. Um, CT scan can be helpful, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next video. CT scans can be helpful, especially if you're looking at posterior malleolus uh, involvement, or maybe you have this fracture pattern that's not exactly a malleolar pattern. Maybe it's more of a pilon fracture pattern. Um, so CT scans are very helpful for that. MRI is not routinely done, but uh, can be helpful to assess ligament and tendon injury, some, some tailor dome lesions, and syndesmotic injuries. So comparison films uh, can be helpful as well. Uh, if you're reconstructing an ankle and you want to compare to the contralateral side to assess some of the angles and measurements we talked about earlier. Manual stress views um, can be done to evaluate the deltoid ligament on a mortise view. The foot should be dorsiflexed and you externally rotate um, the, uh, the foot with the tibia stabilized. Now, sometimes you may not want to squeeze, you know, you may not want to squeeze the uh, leg together like this. You can stabilize without having to quite squeeze the leg because sometimes depending on where you place your hand, that may sort of artificially bring the tibia and fibula together. And here you can see on a stress view, remember we said that this should line up with this. And you can see here those two lines on the right, the green lines, um, are no longer lined up. And uh, you may need to take actual measurements with your um, x-ray system to identify that medial clear space and see if it's you know, greater than five millimeters, for instance. So if you're doing a gravity stress view, you're gonna do it something like this. The lateral part of the foot is down. This is something that much, may be much more tolerated um, and to some extent maybe a little bit more standardized um, and re doesn't require you as a clinician to walk into the uh, x-ray suite. Uh, and it's something you can just order and have the tech uh, do this in a reproducible manner. Uh, this study, uh, as a prospective study, 25 patients, gravity versus manual stress, and there was no difference. A lot of people have adopted this technique. Weight-bearing films can be helpful as well. So you can get weight-bearing um, radiographs sometimes of ankle fractures to identify is there widening on sort of physiologic stress. CT scan. Um, so... A lot of people feel like, well, you know, it's an ankle fracture. I can see everything on x-rays. I don't really need a CT scan. Well, I mean, this in this particular study, it was shown that um, surveyed, uh, patient, uh, surveyed surgeons of 10 trimalleolar ankle fracture cases, and um, once they showed them the CT scan, 25% of them changed their operative techniques after reviewing that. So, you know, when you order studies like that, the question is, is it going to change what you do? Well, 25% is not that low. So if it is going to change what you do, then um, maybe it should be considered. So does it change operative strategy? Here you can see there's some posterior subluxation. There's posterior malleolus fracture. Can you really fully identify it? Perhaps, but many people may not. And here's where a CT scan can be really helpful showing you. You have fairly extensive comminuted multifragmented posterior fractures of the plafond. So another study showing that 
plane radiographs sometimes are not sufficient to evaluate comminution and also impaction of the posterior malleolus fracture shown here. You can see impacted fragments and, you know, their conclusions were you should consider CT scan for all trimalleolar ankle fractures. So in the emergency department, you want to address open wounds. If you have an open fracture, they get immediate antibiotics. Um, closed reduction, again, you want to prevent deformity. You don't want you want to avoid soft tissue um, uh, um, injury from the inside out, right? If you have extreme deformity shown in some of the earlier clinical images in this video. And then splint, well padded. Uh, reduction, you may need to consider intraarticular blocks. Here's a prospective randomized trial showing 42 patients that underwent closed reduction of ankle fracture dislocations and uh, with uh, those who received conscious sedation, I'm sorry, in those receiving conscious sedation versus an intraarticular block. So do you just give conscious sedation or a block, which can be done by the orthopedic surgeon or resident without having to have um, a whole conscious sedation set up? And similar degree of analgesia and sufficient uh, analgesia to get a closed reduction satisfactorily. So this is definitely something to consider. Uh, it's an accessible joint, um, and you can potentially provide this in the emergency setting. Okay, we're going to pause there. We're going to have an extensive discussion of uh, classification and um, SER2 versus SER4 um, stress views, etc. in the next video. Thanks.